Bella Vista Designs is Southern California's premier audio and visual company, specializing in decorative lighting, draping, and sound for your upcoming wedding or event. Hi, I'm Nina La Fuente, and welcome to Fun Sparkle Drama. Here's our host and my BFF, Nico Cervantes. Hey, everyone. Look at Ms. Nina, we're back. Yeah. They didn't fire us. <laughs> right? Yeah. I am so excited for our show today. I'm really excited about it because it we're going to touch base on something that I have had such a hard time with, and that's weight. I have been up, and I have been down, and I have been around, and around the corner again. Um, and you, for most of our friendship, you've really been by my side during all of my weight struggle. Yeah. And all the phases. The... The know this, the know that, yeah. the I'm only eating this <laughs> for this week. Definitely. The, but also, you know, the pain of dealing with it and then also the, the joy of feeling thin and some of the false joy yeah. that you've experienced being smaller in oh, size. definitely. Yeah. And I think too, and what I really do want to make the show about and doesn't mean that I am laughing at people that are fat because I'm fat and it's okay. I want to humanize it. I want to talk about it and right. put it out in the open so people are not hiding from mirrors and they're not hiding from their friends when they've gained right. you know five, 10 pounds. Right. I really want to, because everyone has a problem with it no matter what size you are. Yes, we've talked about my business and how it's, it's predominantly women. Most of my clients are women. And every woman that gets on my table has got some deal with food, her body, men or women. Uh, yeah. But no, but mostly it's the food and dieting thing that I see and then coming from a family of all women growing up and seeing how we all have different relationships with food within one family. And, you know, it's, it's a topic and not just, I mean, I, I'm coming from a female perspective, but you have a very male perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, it's, I have battled with my weight since before puberty even. I mean, really, it was like I was... I was born chubby, yeah. like out of the womb. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just had a little. So I, I definitely think that it's something that we need to talk about. And it, and I think the other thing too is people automatically love to label people that are fat yeah. or have a weight problem. So when you were in the height of like your like diets and you know all the things that you were doing, what was it that like you were hiding? You know, like as far as like food stuff, because we'd eat together and then I would. So you gain weight, and I was like, okay, so what is he hiding? So it was like gaining weight and dieting, or you mean, yeah. okay, no, like, like, when like, I wasn't dieting. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When I wasn't dieting, I mean, I think too, it was a lot of like in between meals. Like, I yeah. am a snacker. I love mm -hmm. snacks. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, anything. I love popcorn, chips, things like that. Like, it was something that kept me going, right. which I realize now it, a lot of it was anxiety based, right. but um, it was that. It was like this in between meals. And did you feel like you didn't know? It was one big meal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was all 24 hours. Yeah. No, did you feel like you didn't know, like, the quality of the food you were eating and, like, the content and, like, it was, like, unconscious eating aside from just, like, cure, like calming your anxiety? Do you feel like it was, um, you didn't know, like, an iced mocha had 8,000 calories or however many they have? Like, did you, were you aware of that stuff? Oh, or? I think... I think too, no, I think I knew what I was doing was bad. Yeah. As far as like, I knew if you eat a bag of chips, I know that wasn't good right. in my head. And right. then, you know, again, you beat yourself up afterward, right. not during or before. Um, and I think it was more or so that, especially now I'm learning about all the processed foods right. and the meats with hormones and GMOs or whatever, right. antibiotics that are added to it. So that was a whole different level that I'm learning about now. But then I think that I just... Uh, it was unconscious. It was really unconscious. It was it was feeding my anxiety, uh -huh. and I'm a person that will hold weight no matter what, even if I'm eating healthy, and I have to realize that. Yeah. Um, I'll always be a bigger guy, and um, I think that I am an all or nothing kind of person. So I'm either on my diet, totally, you know, um, dedicated and uh, and work hard. I'm a competitive bitch when it comes yeah. down to it. So I do not fuck around. If I'm doing something, I do it. Right. If I don't, I'm. Done. I, I'm done. And I let myself totally go. Yeah. 
Well, all I know is a pint of ice cream is not that much. It's easy to finish one of those yeah, really? on your own. Oh, <laughs> but you can't do it all the time, right? Yeah. And so I think Chantal, she's going to talk, like, she's going to share yeah, about... Chantal Greppi here today for yeah. us, who is Santa Barbara's lead nutritionist. She is amazing, and I adore her. And I met her a little bit last week, and we got to talk. We were in her office, which is amazing and safe. And, and halfway through, you know, I was ta interviewing her about the show, yeah. about being on the show. And about halfway through, I realized, like, Am I in my own counseling session right now? Like, <laughs> I could have like laid on her couch and been like, well, you know what? I'm really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I love Cheetos. Right. Um, but it was, she, we're going to have her on and we're going to talk not only about diet. I'm sorry, everyone. We're not going to talk about a quick fix. We are going to talk about skillful eating and weight management and how to make this your lifestyle right. and, and, uh, and nurture your body and right. love that, and, which is something that I'm really learning about now with the things that I'm putting in my body, right. where before I used to use the term, oh, I'm eating skinny, not healthy. Oh, you know, which is like, you know, yeah. fat-free stuff, stuff that's full of chemicals. No chubby treats. No chubby treats. Um, <laughs> no chubby treats. I'm feeling chubby treats right now. Um, no, none of that. So Fantastic. without further ado, let's have Chantelle yeah. Garapi. Chantelle, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You are Santa Barbara's supreme premier nutritionist. According to you. I think that you're fabulous because when I was looking at people to bring on the show, I knew I wanted to discuss weight and lifestyle and that type of thing. I was searching nutritionists up and down the coast and your name kept coming up for me. And I kept going back to your name and looking at your resume and looking at you and the workshops that you teach. And I just was really drawn to you. There was something about you know, everything that you have out there on social media that's, that draws people in. So you're doing a good job there. But I, um, and then I met with you in person and it was like, oh, okay, this is why. <laughs> you're amazing. You make people feel very no, comfortable thank you. Thank for something you. that is really serious for people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, but I, you know, I don't want to talk too much about the serious stuff. Um, I really want to make light of it in a sense of not downplaying it, but make light of it and talk about, you know, the day to day healthy eating. And um, so my first question is, I have to tell you, I admire you completely because you are a role model in diet. Whoa. I, but you know what I mean? Like you've, but you've chosen a career where, you know, if you go up five or 10 pounds or down, you know, people are going to judge you in a sense of like, you're a nutritionist and why are you five pounds heavy? Like, mm. I'd be like, oh yeah, you eat your vegetables and you go on your run and I'm going to sit back and with my bottle of wine and my Twinkies. And you know what I mean? That would be me. So I admire you. Why or how did you decide to be a nutritionist? Okay. Um, well, thanks for admiring. Um, but I've let go. I understand what you're saying. I just want to touch base on that. I understand what you're saying about nutritionists should be the example. You know, we should be the role model. Uh, there are many nutritionists who are not, and I let go of that completely with my years of experience. Now I don't care what people think about my look because I know what comes out of me. I know my stuff. And I think that people uh, feel that when they see me. So this is my best protection against judgment on body size or my lifestyle is that I know my stuff. So that said, um, how did I become a nutritionist? Yes. Um, well, around college age, I was very athletic and I was fascinated by the physical performance of the body. So I decided to study it more. How do we fuel it so it performs so well? Mm -hmm. And um, it's tied also with my mom struggling with a weight issue all her life throughout my whole childhood and you know you want to help your mom you want to help her um lessen the suffering around that and so. let me ask you for a second too because i feel like in my family we've all struggled with weight issues like it's definitely like a genetic thing for us and so in that sense because you have a beautiful body you're fabulous you and your little body. french accent you're so cute but you know but you've you know you've, you obviously I don't think you have so much of a weight issue. I don't. I'm lucky. Um, actually, you know, I think it's the protective effect of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, 
that does that because I've been neglectful with my diet, uh, like all of us humans mm -hmm. at times. And uh, no, I didn't, it didn't develop into a weight problem for me. Um, genetics, we don't know. That's the catch. So you s many people tell me this, Chantal, in my family, we're all heavy. It's genetic. Well, the science show that there is a part that is genetic, but there's also a part that is communicating habits, living habits to children. And the children picking up the living habits and the eating habits of the grown ups. Mm -hmm. So it's also, you know, transmitting the custom. And if the custom of the family is not healthy, the kids are going to inherit them. So it is genetic, but you're not doomed. That's what I want to say. It's not because there's some genetic component that you should just throw the towel and I'll be heavy all my life. Mm -hmm. There's tons of success stories that show that people lose their weight and they go against that genetic is because they decide to drop the habits of the family, the unhealthy habits of the family when they're grown up. And that's what I, really what I want to talk about tonight okay. is that the diets, you know, and how it's not about a diet. I'm not having you on here to talk about, you know, taking a spoonful of vinegar before every meal <laughs> or becoming paleo or, you know, all that wacky stuff. Um, I'm having you on here to talk about how it's not just black or white. It, it really is about those day-to-day -day choices that you make. And, 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 and stretching that out long term. Mm -hmm. Because I know when I diet, I you know, was telling Nina earlier, like I'm all or nothing kind of guy. And, um, and then as soon as it's done, you know, I'm exhausted. Three months, four months of it. I think my last weight loss journey was in a year. And it was so much work and I was exhausted. Yeah. I was anemic. I was you know, yeah. eating 1,100 calories a day. And exactly. you can't do that forever. Exactly. So, these fat diets, very strict diet, they are exhausting, especially in the modern world that we live in with all our responsibilities. Weight loss is another stressor. Huh? Losing weight or losing part of what has been constructed is demanding. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, you know, we need to be, we need to have energy available in order to tackle, let's say a weight loss project. So yeah, they are exhausting sometimes, especially those fat diets, very strict and they go against all your habits. So yeah, definitely um, they can't last. If they need so much energy and they create so yeah. much tension, s people cannot tolerate that, that strong of a tension for too long. So then they drop it and then they feel bad. They go all out the other way. Yeah. Just well, you know, it's funny because I'm in therapy now <laughs> and a lot of my weight issues have been connected to other forms of my life that I didn't even realize. And, Good for you. and um, I've seen that. you have a lot of courage. Thank you. And but I really realized, too, my therapist looked at me one day and I was like, well, well, when I was on this diet and I lost all this weight and I should go back to that. And then she looked at me and she goes, Nico, why does everything have to be all or nothing for you? Mm. You know, why does it have to be that way? Why can't you just be normal? Why can't you just be okay? Why do you have to be white or why do you have to be black? Sorry, nothing racial. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, why do you have to have those parameters, you know, those parameters of one or the other versus uh, just looking at a day as a normal day? Yeah. And, you know, instead food of- just food. Exactly, instead <laughs> of an outcome of something else, of just being, um, so one of my challenges that I have is that I'm a really busy person. Mm. I am on the go all the time. I actually like to cook. I don't have time to cook, to be quite honest. Um, I And I just grab things fast, usually fast food, or uh, you know chips or something along those lines. And what are some tips that you can give people that, uh, that are busy, that have busy lifestyles? Yeah, well, the first thing that comes to mind is where's the room? for health in that busy life. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, because exactly. Because sometimes there's no time to even fit health or healthy eating or healthy weight in a cram, busy life. We want to do too much. And of course, it just drops. Um, so, t so a person has now said, I want to be healthy. I want to move on with my life. Um, I have this crazy busy schedule. 
you know, I don't want to set myself up to fail. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend for them to do, for to start creating those habits, those healthy habits? Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the catch when people are concerned with their weight and they're busy is that they think skipping meals is going to be um, the best way to lose weight because yeah. the less I eat, the more I'll lose. False. So not skipping meals. So kind of plan ahead of the game and make time to eat, even if it's just in the car, even it's, but fueling the body helps a lot. Um, well, how do we fuel that body? Like, what are we, yeah. what do we do? Like when you go grocery shopping, yeah. let's say I'm grocery shopping with you. We're grocery shopping together. Okay. <laughs> Where do you like to grocery shop? Oh, different places. I like to try them all. Okay. So let's say we're here. We're pushing our cart together, arm in arm, being cute. Okay. My little French girlfriend. Okay. Um, <laughs> girlfriend, I say that loosely. Um, and you, we go start going down the aisles. What are yes. things? Well, I'm going to ask you what you like to eat. You must like your food. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, okay, breakfast. We need to find time for breakfast. People who eat breath breakfast are skinnier than people who don't. Mm -hmm. People who eat breakfast has better grade at school than people who don't. So breakfast. So then what do you like to eat at breakfast? There's no, in America, there's a convention, but you don't need to follow the convention. Um, healthy, grab, on-the-go foods for breakfast. I mean, fruits, we know that. Mm -hmm. uh, people grab yogurts. Mm -hmm. um, they're easy. Now, yogurts come in liquid form, so you don't, need, you don't even need a spoon. Um, uh, they do make these cereal bars. I, these, many of them are like candy bars. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm like, wait, I thought I was eating something healthy and yeah. I could have had a Snickers. Yes. No. No. So uh, people grab a handful of nuts or granola um, okay. that they mix with their fruit or in their yogurt. Well, you know, it was funny <clears throat> when I was sitting in your your spot in your office, your beautiful office, mm -hmm. I noticed that you mentioned something to me because it shortly, very quickly became like I was uh -oh. one of your clients. <laughs> uh -oh. And you said something that I loved that I think we should share with everyone. Shoot. Because I go to the state of mind where I'm like, I'm gonna be healthy. And I go to the grocery store and I buy all these vegetables and I buy all these fruits and I'm, I'm gonna be healthy. And I, I post uh -huh. pictures of Zac Efron on my refrigerator and you know do all that and then I, don't eat the food. Well, it ends up going bad. Yeah. My vegetables, my fruit, things like I'm that. I'm there too. But you told me something that I am totally going to take away is that you said when you buy your vegetables, you cook them right away yeah. and put them in containers so they're ready to go and you can put yeah. a little salad dressing on them or something. Yeah, because I was tired of, of wasting my vegetable. I had all these good intentions mm -hmm. and I had planned menus and but then my life would get too busy and I, I couldn't get to cook them. So I decided, you know, I'm going to cook them all al dente. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. I love and, it. And, you know, I can eat them cold. I can reheat them. And that way I can not yeah, waste my money. Yeah, and they're ready money. to go. That's right. That's the kind of stuff I need because, you know, as much as I love to go out to a nice dinner and wine and dine and uh, have a nice steak, um, uh, I really do like those fast kind of meals, you know, like... And it made me eat more vegetable that yeah. way because they do say what's in your fridge, you're going to eat it. If it's full of junk food, you're going to eat that. If it's full of healthy food, you're going to eat that. Yeah. So when I have... Or you can be like me who just doesn't open my fridge at all and goes to In-N-Out or, <laughs> or goes to Gelson's. Ouch. Um, yeah. But you did mention that you're eating a lot more vegetables. And what you did talk about earlier uh, when we were in your office is that you are now a vegetarian. Or are you yeah. mostly 90% plant, plant-based diet? All, all plant foods. I'm so, trying to be vegan, yeah. So I have always been like a steak and potatoes kind of guy. Like I love steak, I love shrimp, I love meat. I Because I was saying Atkins, I was telling Nina, I've had most success on Atkins or paleo or any of those things because I love meat and nuts. Yeah. So I, when I think about that, it's so difficult for me to give up food. But when I was in your office and we were talking about it and you were, and you're, I, I want you to tell everyone else, because the way you say it with your beautiful French accent, it is true on, you know, the why what, you became a vegetarian. What resonated with you? What did I say that resonated with you? You told me, why should I um, risk these animals' lives or their, um, their harm or their, you know, a lot of places don't have, when they kill them, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> um, I can't even talk about not eating meat. I'm getting nervous. Um, no, but when, you know, the process of, yeah. 
you know, meat and butchering. It's not, it's not a humane way of doing it. it. And you said, why should I risk my taste buds for these animals? Yeah. And I called this, I think, arbitrary discrimination. Is that for my little taste? Yeah, I, I had a hard time um, just to feed my palate, just to feed my preference. I'm going to take away so a being's life just because I feel like it. And this mm -hmm. to me was just like, whoa, there's an abundance of food out there. It's not that food is lacking. Why do I have the power to say, you lose your life for my taste buds? Yes. See, that's what I, I, I love me, the way you say that. And to me, it's just I could not. And I started thinking about this more and more. And I started looking online. And it's horrible the way animals are treated. Oh, it, yeah. it hurts. And I think this is universal. I think like we cannot accept this treatment and but we put our head in the sand we don't want to know because meat tastes good cheese oh, yeah. tastes no, good no i i see those document like the documentaries that come up on my netflix like oh you should watch this i'm like i'm not watching that it's gonna exactly. ruin my night <laughs> exactly. it's gonna ruin when that's i have my it. steak that's it so we don't want yeah, we don't, I get that. Mm, we don't want yeah. it that's no right. absolutely so that's tell right. me the one big thing i hear and i've always had this conception of of like, oh, we need the protein. I'm a man, I need the protein, I need the meat. And so talk about ways that you get your protein. Um, where, where do plant-eating people get their protein? Plant-eating people. Yes. <laughs> Dinosaurs. Uh, vegan. Or well, exactly. Is that the one that doesn't? Exactly. Yeah. So protein is for muscle and, and immune system. So elephants and rhinos and gorillas, they are able to maintain these huge muscles by not eating an ounce of meat or animal protein. So yeah. where do they get it? They get it from plants, so vegetables. If we look at the calorie content of these foods. What kind of vegetables? Let's say uh, just regular vegetables or starchy vegetables. Okay. They do have some protein in them, maybe like uh, 12% of the calories you eat is protein. Chantel, you need to tell me what vegetables? Because I'm going to eat... Any oh, so broccoli, broccoli, green okay. beans, potatoes. Okay, good. Yams. I need to know. I'm like, okay. you know, I'm so clueless when it comes Got to it. this kind of thing. I'm not Got a vegetable it. kind of guy. Tell me, carrots, so, carrots and your potato. You told me you're a meat potato guy. Yeah, I love potato potatoes. Potato has protein in it. And yams and all the green leafy vegetables. And what vegetables do you like? I do like vegetables when I do cook them. Okay, which one? Yeah, I do. I love broccoli. I, I do love broccoli. <laughs> Tell me the words. I love, uh, I love broccoli. I love green beans. I love kale. I go. do. I am like Perfect. on this kale kick with everyone else. Perfect. Kale, kale, kale. Um, but so yeah. you get protein there. Yes. Then after that, beans. So be lentil soup. I'm not a bean Three person, bean lad but they three may be. bean, Three bean salads. Okay. Hummus. Uh, black bean burritos. Um, where else do we find? All the beans, the legumes, excellent protein. Yeah. Then the grains. Okay. Uh, you eat rice. I'm so afraid of eating grains. <gasps> Carbohydrates you know, I are I have that evil. in my head. Even like, you know, like I, yeah. I know, evil. I know. We can do a whole show no, no, on why they on. got yeah. a bad rep. But no, carbohydrates or grains don't make people fat. Actually, they help people stay thin. Mm-hmm. So quinoa, brown rice, uh, couscous. Uh, what other grains do you eat? I Corn, don't. like corn tortillas. Well, when I'm being healthy or when I'm be being naughty? Oh, all or nothing. Chubby treats? Chubby <laughs> treats? Uh, I only eat grains when I'm eating chubby treats. And uh, chubby that's treats. my naughty food, my quote. Chubby treats. What's chubby treats? Chubby treats is like my little thing that I call like things that are, that I love, that, that I, yeah, like, oh, I can't have chubby you, treats today because I was naughty what? last night. That's exactly where you get caught. I know. The good or bad mentality. This is what is messing up your whole plan. When you add morality to food, good or bad, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Because then when you feel bad, you go with the bad food, the chubby treats. Yeah. And then when you want to be good, ding, yeah. you know, then you go to the healthy foods. So you swing like this. I see food, not good or bad. I see food like a color. Mm. Pink. I love Tell pink. Me. pink. I love pink. Good or bad? Good, obviously. 
Good. You see my set? <laughs> <laughs> Good here. Good here, yeah. But if this is pink, the curtains are pink, everything is pink. Is it going to still be good? Pink is a bad example for me no, because no, no. I could be like Anna Nicole Smith and just cover my whole house in pink fur. I see. Um, but all that yeah. to say, all that to say that it depends how you use the food. To me, it's always the context. How you use the food, in what context is it used? So when I have anorexic patients, Okay, I want them to eat gummy bears and whatever they can eat, so they just eat. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But then, um, gummy bears is not a healthy food. But no. in this context, any food is better than no food. So depending on the context, to me, a food is not good or bad. Now, I would invite you to change your words and see if you can call food healthy or unhealthy. Very different than good or bad. Yeah. It um, deflates the drama. Unfortunately, food. we are going, we're getting out of time because okay. I can just talk forever. We can do this, we can talk about yes. weight and everything forever and we'll have you back because okay. I want to have you back for a show um, in six weeks okay. and I want you to give me some goals to do and then we're gonna be here in six weeks and we're gonna see how I did on my on my homework. You are such a brave man. I we're here talking about you know Good we got to do it. But I I want to make this inspirational and I want to utilize you because you're amazing. And so you give me you know three days a week. Give me a homework for three days a week, and we're gonna to touch base in six weeks and see how I did. So what do you want me to do? Quickly. Ah uh, yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Quickly because they're gonna cut you. us off, girl. I know. But I told you I don't do that. Okay. Well, okay. Wh what I, do you want to do? I'm so afraid of being a vegetarian. So why don't I? Why don't I do three days a week of having a plant-based diet for six uh, weeks? That's, that's overkill, I think. One day a week. Two days. One meal. One meal a day. One meal a week, plant-based, vegetarian. Perfect. Monday, meatless Monday. I am competitive. You better watch it. Look it up online. Okay. Meatless Monday. Meatless do that. Meatless Monday. I, I'm all about meatless Monday. Chantel, thank you for being here. Thank you are amazing and beautiful you. and gorgeous. And thank you. thank you for humanizing this ugly weight thing that <laughs> everyone deals with. I love you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Fun, Sparkle, and Drama. I am Nico Cervantes, and I will see you next time. Bella Vista Designs is Southern California's premier audio and visual company, specializing in decorative lighting, draping, and sound for your upcoming wedding or event.